Hi guys, so I'm just looking to buy a new model cut. Something a bit different, you know? Different? Well, what you build on me? I'm just like an average model kit maker, you know? I build like Apex, Hello, Revolve. Oh, I see. So no resin. I mean, I've never tried this. I'm, I'm sure you could try it. It's it's a bit outside my comfort zone, though. Oh, is it now? So, you want to What do you mean, one of those types? Oh, I What? No, I, I can do a resin kit. You watch, I can do a resin kit. Hey guys, it's the Model Making Time, and today we're building my first ever resin model kit. Yikes. Resin kits are different to injection molded plastic kits. Injection molded kits are what your big manufacturers use, so people like Affix, Hella, Ruvel, Zvezda, Italeri, you know, everyone basically uses them. Because injection molder kits are plastic, they use poly cement to glue them together. Poly cement works by basically melting the plastic together and reforms it. It's why you get that really nice finish on injection molder kits and you can sand them down and it doesn't, you know, just cause the glue to separate because, you know, basically melting the plastic together. The advantage of injection molder kits are they're much more scalable and easier to access. A younger or less able model maker can easily do an injection molded kit. There are also going to be less imperfections because of the nature of injection molded kits. It's basically a mould where plastic's injected in and it sets in the mould and then it's removed. There's generally very little variation between, you know, each pressing. Resin kits are quite different. They tend to use a sculpted original, make a mould from that and then they'll just keep replicating it. There is a chance for imperfections and even between different moulds that they make because quite often the original mould might, you know, degrade over time and they'll have to make a new one from the master sculpt and so, you know, you will get some variation naturally. You also probably won't get the same degree of accuracy so you might have to do some more sanding, cutting or just, you know, putty filling in order to make the model fit together. However, resin kits can quite often be made purely from passion rather than for profit so you can get much more interesting, diverse, or unusual subjects in resin. Some manufacturers, like Checkmaster Resin, the clothes in the name, have made a whole industry out of this, making model kits that are more limited run, but are much more unusual and rare subjects. And that's like what we're doing today, with the Fokker S40 Muck Trainer. It's very different to what we normally see in an injection model kit, although it's criminally underrated aircraft. If you don't know about the history of the aircraft, I've done an Aviation Archive history video on it, so go ahead and watch that and then come back and watch us build this model again. So I guess, let's have a look inside of the box and you can sort of understand why a resin kit is so different. But this is my first one. Well, I, I sort of started building one a long time ago but never finished it, so this is the first one I'm doing from beginning to end. <laughs> Boom. Checkmaster resin. This is the, obviously, the kit number. And it is the... Fokker S14 Mark Trainer. The vacuum form canopy looks really, really nice. I'm not going to take them out of the wrapper just because they're really fragile compared to normals. Like, they have a lot of give to them. But I mean, the detail on them looks like you can see it here. You can see all the uh, detailing on it. So, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with these. The detailing on those kits as well is amazing. Like, I'm genuinely shook by how fantastic these resin kits look and how smooth and amazing they are. Like, look how little work he's doing to it. The wings as well, just, ugh, everything just looks absolutely stunning. Tail section, so this is like the vertical stabilizer, it looks great just nothing needs doing to it just take it off the bit and a little bit of clean up tail section again ugh, just it's so gorgeous and this is the cockpit wow so yeah lots of parts but little to do i guess <laughs> okay so now hopefully you can see why resin kits are so different they also tend to have fewer parts that need more work than lots of parts that can go together quite quickly I guess there's not really a lot else to do is that we should just get into the construction of this kit and just see how it goes. But, I mean, obviously I already know how it goes. I'm in the future. <laughs> but, you guys don't, so <laughs> let's have a look at the construction. Well, I apparently forgot to record the uh, very start of making this model kit and putting the cockpit together. 
but as you can see it's pretty much the seats. The cockfire ended up not being the strongest point of this kit for me um, that's just because of my skill. Nothing else that it's actually fine, um, I think I just sort of didn't build it in the best way. Important to note though I am wearing a mask and I will wear a mask throughout this entire project, of, I mean for the, like the construction side of things because Resin is not something you want to get on your lungs and play around with, so it's really, really important to protect yourself. If you do um, sort of do any resin kits, please do get a mask. Realistically, you should do it for any time that you are sanding, but plastic isn't as bad and doesn't get as airborne, I understand, but I could be completely wrong on that. But I've always been told to do it for resin, and that's why I am. You can see that I'm painting the cockpit. And I'm painting it a green colour that I've mixed myself, and that's just from googling the cockpit online. Um, I did end up getting some lighting inside the cockpit that we'll deal with later on, but yeah, it looks it looks all right, I think. <laughs> the cockpit itself, there's I don't know, there there seemed to be a massive gap when I ended up putting it together, and I sort of ended up getting to a point where the lovely instrument panel that came with it was just not readable at all um it's like it's a shame i if i had more skill i probably wouldn't have messed it up so bad but like it is my first resin model kit i'm not too disappointed in myself i guess now obviously some of the most important things to do with resin is to constantly test it because resin is expensive resin kits are expensive and so if you do screw it up you want to Make it a really, really minor error that you can fix, not a catastrophe that you have to buy a new kit. Now, I was pretty careful. I constantly tried to make sure things fit. I also made sure I got enough weight in the front that it would not be a tail sitter. If I remember correctly, the instructions do tell you how much, but to be honest, once you start building enough plastic kits, you get a feeling for how much it should be. And you can also test the center of gravity as you're going anyway things worth mentioning here so you can see that all-purpose glue from hobbycraft yeah never ever use that um never use a cheap all-purpose glue buy some proper epoxy um it it's gonna make your life a lot easier or at the very least super glue i oh, regret ever trying to use that all-purpose glue because it takes like in, in one instance it's like a week to cure. it's just not good um i ended up pretty much taking all of it off and re parts of it with epoxy I got a worse finish overall on my model as a result of it. The other thing worth mentioning is you can see the gun pod. I'm putting that on my model. It wasn't really that commonly used, but to be honest, I just wanted something a bit different. And I don't think I did too much more on the stream. I pretty much just made sure everything fit. It's a lot of sanding. Use um, sort of actual proper metal files, sandpaper, everything to make sure you get flat surfaces. But because Czech Master as in, are sort of experts in making resin kits, there's nowhere near as much work as there are for smaller manufacturers. Things will actually sort of just fit together, which is really, really nice. Especially when it's your first model kit that's in resin. <laughs> also, not sure when I cut out the canopy, but I tested that and it seemed to be okay. Um, I think I cut that off screen, unfortunately. Now we are skipping ahead a little bit. I have put the landing gear on. I can't remember when I did that. I think I actually just did it whilst I was doing other things. I just thought, oh, probably do that. And it was pretty straightforward. It was really easy to put on. Considering the absolute kerfuffle I have on plastic kits with their landing gear, this was way easier. I used the proper epoxy, which was I think the first time I started using it on this kit. And my God, it just worked and it still holds, it's great. Now you can see that I'm putting on the air brakes on this and there are three or spoilers, whatever you want to call them. There's three of them on this, uh, two on, e well, one each, each side, should I say, and then one on the underneath of the aircraft. They look really cool and, well, I mean, that's the only reason I decided to have them all open. You don't see this kit very often and you're not gonna see one with it open all the time, so screw it, I just decided, hey, let's have them all open. <laughs> I made the mistake though of using the all-purpose glue I think on this um, so I was still using it a lot but you can see like, areas like particularly on the bottom of the wings where there's like like looks like actual glue and that is the all-purpose glue it just doesn't oh, it's, it's awful stuff it, it's good for other things obviously but it's just not good for these model kits yeah I ended up carrying on using it for quite some time during the course of this project and whilst putting on the air brakes and other things and it led to some unfortunate consequences but 
it's not the absolute end of the world it is a cheap solution if you are on a really tight budget because epoxy can be expensive you can do it you're just gonna need to take a long long time to make sure things cure properly but yeah that's pretty much all there was to it for construction it's again resin models have a very few parts to them it's quite simple in that regard i guess but as you can see i've uh, painted the model i've sprayed it with uh, a base coat initially and then you can see i've taped off some sections for the orange and then i've put silver 11 rattle can uh, from humbrol over the top of it and um, to get that lovely metal finish I'm painting it with an orange initially and then I'll go over it with a luminous orange to get the bright orange training colours. Will this take time? Yeah, absolutely. It takes quite a long time to build up orange. There are several pigments including yellow and orange and some of the sort of purples as well that just don't go on like in one coat. You will have to layer them, it's better to do it in thin small layers than to try and do a thick coat many layers make a beautiful deep color and that's what i hopefully ended up with i think you can see as it goes on the orange gets brighter and brighter obviously there's a massive difference between the orange and the luminous orange but i mean even with the luminous orange once you get a couple of layers on it definitely looks a lot more vibrant and i think again because of its era and that it was never part of any sort of display team that i'm aware of the Fokker S14 has quite a simple paint scheme. There are many of them. <laughs> there are many, many, many paint schemes for the S14. Despite that there are only 20 aircraft, uh, it did serve for quite some time. So there are lots of different schemes. The main differences between them pretty much are yellow and orange and then sort of decals. Uh, well, decal, I mean like the round all sizes and positionings. And sometimes there's a Dutch flag on the tail section of the aircraft and sometimes there's not. But yeah, there's not massive amounts of difference i chose to go for the orange purely because i thought the orange looked spectacular and always looks good on training aircraft as you can tell it's a lot a lot of layering and you just need to have patience with these sorts of things orange is a pesky color unlike black where you can pretty much just do one layer and you're done orange is just going to take time but i think you can see the difference between that initial boring orange layer and now it just looks it's radiant really it's a it's amazing how bright this orange gets honestly also obviously i've painted the landing gear black and i've done the black anti uh, glare reflection surface on the front of the aircraft as well i think there's a little bit of silver left at the front which uh, looks really cool sorry about the moodiness of the look i was uh, hoping to try and up my game a little bit with some black backgrounds <laughs> it does look a bit better in the future but you know the beginning you can see i painted the cockpit as well which i did freehand with small brush it doesn't look amazing i'm going to be really honest with you i could have done a lot better but i just seem to mess it up the decals i actually had three different options available i had some sent from my friend um warcraft i had some that i bought and then i had the ones that came with the kit and i just ended up going with ones in the kit i don't think they're the right size for the scheme that i've gone with but i just thought you know what i can't be bothered i'm not gonna have the right colors otherwise i might not have the right shaping otherwise so i'm just gonna use one with the kit we're not gonna have a hundred percent accurate scheme but you know what it is what it is my model is just unique in that regards it's a what if scheme and anyone who doesn't like it then they just don't look at it i guess <laughs> but you know sometimes you, you make mistakes in your model kits you realize you can't do a lot about it do you start again no of course you don't you just carry on with what you've got <laughs> i don't think it looks too bad but i mean i definitely probably could have done a better time Okay, so originally I was going to go through all the errors that I made and all the issues with the kit, but... Well, I mean issues with me making the kit, not issues with the kit, because the kit's fine. But I've decided I'm not going to do that, and instead we're just going to have a look at the model, because if I go through everything that's wrong with it, you're just going to see that. And um, bitch is probably not as bad as I think it is, so let's have a look at the model, and uh, yeah, let's see what you guys think. Silhouettes of you are like a ton. 
Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever want to give me wings You don't ever want to set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through Got issues in my head I like you in my bed But you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead And I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being a monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something out of my nightmares See me right there But if I lay down and I play dead So let's talk cannabis. <laughs> it fits better than the one on my CT4 head right now. That one definitely just didn't fit. This one fits, but there's still some gaps. And I tried to fill them in with paint on one side, which looks okay. The other side looks kind of trash though. Two things happened as a result of that as well. Part of it was covering up the blue long decal. So I mixed some paint. It was just Revell's like, plain blue paint with some white until I got the right sort of colour and then I just tried to make it look a little bit better. That worked as well because the black on the front of the plane I hadn't done sort of at the right level um, so I sort of merged it. It's not 100% historically accurate but I didn't want to create an even thicker black line on top which would have a really horrible texture because I'd already lost the model. It is what it is. I think it looks okay though. There are some odd textures on the model, <laughs> so two things happened here. Firstly, I was really stupid and glazed it without giving the model a wipe down with a fibre glove. People often think you don't need to do that or just forget to do that and what happens is it means any dust that's got in the model from either moving it from one room to another or a pet like my cat. Um, it means it just gets trapped in the model and I didn't realise until way too late so there is some dust basically trapped on my model. I tried to weather it to hide it and to be honest I don't think it looks horrendous, I just, it, it's annoying, you know. There are some other odd textures because I got clear glue on some of the side of the fuselage and I'm too scared to try and fix it. I'd rather have it there and have a model that looks complete than to try and remove it and then have a broken model so, you know. That's a compromise, I guess. There are some other odd textures where I haven't fully smoothened down before I apply it to my silver paint and didn't realise. Some of this is just going to be from the glue drying over time, so I originally used an all-purpose glue that didn't dry very quickly and actually took literally a week to dry in some places. Uh, before I started using, you know, epoxy glue, because that's what you should be using. So if anyone out there is using hobby crafts, um, all-purpose glue, don't use it for resin projects because it just will never dry. We learned that on the HA300 and for some reason I still didn't learn that on this project properly. <laughs> I also broke the engine on this kit, unfortunately, um, so I've had to replace it with sort of my own <laughs> kit, I guess, and I've used sort of part of a drop tank from a Hawker Hunter kit that I had going spare because I was never going to use the drop tanks anyway. Um, so I basically glued them together, chopped them, and then sanded it down. And it doesn't look good, I'm going to be honest. I'm re I really hate it. I really wish I hadn't broken it, but I did, and it was an accident. And like that happens, and you just have to try and crack on with it. So I did what I could. I tried to weather it to hide how bad it looks. And you guys tell me in the comments below, because I'm sure you'll, you'll happily tell me how bad it looks if it does look that bad. Other than that, I guess the air brakes are the other thing I let myself down with. I didn't fully clean them up. Now, some of this is because of the all-purpose glue I was using. I was too scared to sort of touch them because they weren't fully drying. I then used epoxy glue on top of that. Now, what happened? I created a giant blob. So, on um, all of the air brakes, that's just like this giant almost like half a sphere of just gunk and it's now dry fully 
but it's a mixture of all-purpose glue and epoxy resin. It's really unfortunate. If I could go back in time, I would have just used epoxy glue from the start. It wouldn't have had any of this issue. But unfortunately, I didn't, so here we are. It's kind of unsightly, but hey, it's a learning curve. You're never going to do everything right on the first kit you make, whether that's injection molded or resin, so I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I was really happy with how the orange came out, though ugh, I probably should have thinned it a bit more and used some aquacolor mix to make sure it self-leveled a bit more because I'd hand see some of the brush streaks, but I mean overall it's a really vibrant, beautiful luminous orange, so that part I'm actually kind of proud of. Overall I don't think this model looks bad in any way, shape or form. On a shelf it'll look absolutely fine, but like at the same time it's my first resin kit, so is it that bad? <laughs> we should also do buy or fly. So I'm not going to talk about like the subject matter I guess, because when I do buy or fly, it's about whether the kit itself is worth the money it paid. And if you're looking at buying this kit, it's because you have an interest in the subject already. So whether or not, you know, the subject is appealing is almost irrelevant. So on that basis, buy this kit. Because it is a well-made kit. It's a fantastic resin kit. It's actually really good for beginners because, as I say, it's my first one. Because I think it's such a big training aircraft, that's what makes it so good for beginners because it's quite forgiving in that regard and like the wings being so huge I mean you're not having to get like a fine curve on them or get like a really fine shape it's quite a simplistic structure so it's kind of a really good beginner resin card honestly on that note though I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who hasn't got an interest in the aircraft because I mean, it's expensive, it's a resin kit, it's always going to be. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed that as much as I have. It's been a wild, wild journey to build this model kit, but you know what, I'm really proud of what we've done. Obviously, if you've liked 15 years today, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to support my projects, head over to Kofi, where you can donate either once or you can do it on a monthly basis. Make sure you drop me a comment as well, letting me you know what your favourite part of this video was, because I'm really interested to know. I'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have fun modeling.